This is how you go about buying your first Ferrari. Well, this is how I went about buying my first Ferrari. So I'm going to try and translate the story, not make it too boring for you. But for now, let's get into it. So I bought my first Ferrari in December of 2022, a few months ago. It was an 812 Superfast. And one of the most interesting comments I got was, how come Ferrari let you buy an 812 Superfast as your first car and not something rubbish like a California? And my response to that is, stop believing YouTube myths. Ferrari will let you buy whatever you want as long as there is allocation for it. Ferrari are very, very, very interested in making money from selling cars because they are a car company. So what they do is you go in, you say what you want. If they have allocation available, they will let you buy it unless you go to a terrible dealer. I know as with all companies, there are rogue traders out there who won't want you to take the easy route and will try and be like, you have to get this or you have to get that. Some dealerships will just take the piss more than others. But the Ferrari I went to were chill. They said, look, you can have any car you want as long as we have an allocation available for it. Um, fun fact, they offered me a Puro Sangue. Um, Puro Sangue? Puro Sangue? Puro Sangue. They offered me the Ferrari Puro Sangue, their FUV car, not an SUV thing. They offered me one of those back in September and I said no. They said, we have allocation for first time Ferrari buyers. Would you like a V12 SUV? Um, all you have to do is give us 25 grand and your car will arrive in 2025. And I said, no, because that is too long to wait. And now I'm kicking myself. But that is a story for another day, uh, a painful one, I must say. Back to buying my Ferrari. So I said to them, look, I want to buy a Ferrari. They said, cool, here's what we have in stock. And I said, I don't want any of that. <laughs> At this time, they had some cars I wasn't interested in. I originally was interested in the F8 Tributo. Um, I changed my mind after test driving one that my friend had as a courtesy car. So I set my sights on the 812 Superfast. Before I got the 812 Superfast, um, I was just going to go into Ferrari and purchase it from whoever was there. But funnily enough, one day the gentleman, Tom, that sold me my G-Wagon at the time, messaged me and he said, I have good news and bad news. I said, what's the good news and what's the bad news? He said, the bad news first is I'm leaving Mercedes. I was like, damn, my G-Wagon guy. How am I going to get G-Wagons now? But he said, the good news, I'm going to Ferrari. And I said, the G-Wagons, I'll take a Ferrari. <laughs> and I said, look, Tom, I'm going to be your first customer. I've been looking at Ferraris. I'm interested in the 812. When you get there, if you have one, let me know. And I promise I'll be your first customer. I don't know why I said that, because I wasn't sure that I was in a position where I was ready to buy a Ferrari or financially, if it would make sense. But sometimes I get excited and I say stupid things. And that's one of the stupid things I said. But it turned out all right. Um, coincidentally, as soon as I got off the call with him, my barber called me, who I haven't seen in a while, so ignore my dead trim right now, my hair's just grown out. Um, he called me on FaceTime and I was like, Jesus Christ, like, my barber never calls me on FaceTime, what's happening? Is he being robbed? Is he being held hostage? So I answered the phone and it wasn't my barber, it was a mutual friend that was there with my barber getting his hair cut. And he said, Tommy, how are you going? How's, how you been? I said, I'm alright man, I've been chilling. I said to him, how's your car going? Because he had a GT63 AMG. He said, oh, I've got a new car. And I said, oh, what car is? And he said, Ferrari 812. I said, God really wants me to buy an 812. And he was like, why do you say that? And I said, because I literally just got off the phone with my uh, Mercedes dealer and he's moved to um, Ferrari. And I said to him, I want a Ferrari 812. And he said, the gentleman I was speaking to on the phone, buy one, you will love it. It's an amazing car. So I hung up the phone, I said, cool. That's weird because I was just talking about 812s and now I've had two signs that I should buy one. So in my head, I was like, God's telling me to buy an 812. Let's make this happen. So uh, Tom starts working at Ferrari now. It's about November, um, end of November last year. And he sends me the picture of a blue Ferrari 812 with a stripe down the middle. And I said, holy smokes, that looks gorgeous. The color I wanted was blue. I wasn't interested in a red one. Um, I just couldn't believe it because it was just like the perfect spec for me. Admittedly, I don't know much about Ferrari specs. I am a Lamborghini guy. As you probably know from the channel, I have tons of Lamborghinis. So I've had tons of Lamborghinis and I have tons of Porsches. I just love them so much. It is like an addiction at this point. But Ferrari, I had no knowledge of. I kind of knew some bits about Bob's and about Ferraris, but I wasn't sure if I was going to get one. So Tom said, look, come in and see it, see how you feel, see if you get along with it. And if you do, we can sort something out for you. So I went into Ferrari. I saw this car behind me. I was like, oh my God, this car is sexy. Tom said, I know it's very sexy. Everyone's been looking at it. We've parked it in the middle of the showroom just because it's so sexy. 
And I said, look, Tom, like, admittedly, I really want a Ferrari, but I'm not sure if the numbers are going to work out and I'm not sure if it's something I could do right now. And he said to me, uh, have you still got the G-Wagon? I said, yeah, of course I still have the G-Wagon. You sold it to me and you said I shouldn't sell it. Like, well, of course I'll still have it. And then he said to me, well, how about we do a deal? You give me your G-Wagon and I give you the Ferrari. And at this point, I'm there like, huh? How does that work out? And he was like, no, it'll work out. And I was like, how? And he said, the G-Wagon costs this much. It's worth this much. If you trade it in now, you would have made money on the G-Wagon, put all the money you made on the G-Wagon and your equity that's already in it from when you've been paying your uh, finance agreement and whatnot, and push that into the Ferrari 812 Superfast and your monthly payments would probably be the same or less. So I didn't believe this. He worked out the numbers, he gave me a form, and lo and behold, they were less. I think this car costs about £100 a month less than my G-Wagon did. So I was like, wow, this is so crazy, but the G-Wagon's my wife's car and I doubt she's gonna sell it, but okay. So I go home now thinking, oh man, I wish I didn't go to Ferrari because now all I'm thinking about Ferraris. And then I speak to my wife and I'm like, look, Tom said this, he's working at Ferrari now. He said he'll take the G-Wagon off us and give us a Ferrari. In my head, I'm thinking, my wife, there's no way in hell she's letting go of a G-Wagon. I mean, she, lo- she called her G-Wagon Gigi. That's how serious it is. She loved her G-Wagon. I said, there's no way in hell that she's letting go of it. But then she went, well, I'm struggling to get in the G-Wagon because I'm pregnant and the Cayenne's coming in a few months. So sure, let's just do it. And I was like, hold on, who are you and what have you done with my wife? Because last time I checked, you were still calling your car Gigi and rolling around with your girls and the windows down playing music. But yeah, for some reason, she thought it was a good idea. So (laughs) I went back to Tom, we got some numbers. I financed the Ferrari before anyone asked, did you buy it until pay out right? I financed the Ferrari because I like to keep a lot of liquid cash. I don't like to pump it all into cars. Also, when you take money out of a business, if I take money out of my business to um, buy a car, I pay tax on that money and I wasn't really willing to give the government my fun money. Um, So yeah, we financed the car. Ferrari finance is amazing. You literally speak to a guy on the phone that lives, uh, that works in London and he talks you through the process. He drums up some bespoke numbers for you with a package that fits you and suits you well. And then you get to uh, get a Ferrari. So at this point, the numbers, the numbers made sense. The car made sense. My wife made sense. So I was like, why don't I just do this? So I said to myself, look, Tommy, just chill out for a second. Slow down really, really think about this properly. So I took a few days and then I said to Tom, look, I'm not sure if this car is the one. I was expecting the car to be about 250 when I first started looking for an 8 super Superfast. This car was listed at 295. So I was like, ah, this is painful. However, Tom sent me a message that really changed my thought process. He said, this car is so special that there's not another one of it. And I said, yes, agreed, but come on. And then he said, look, how would you feel if you saw me post a video of another customer picking up this car? And I said to him, I would be heartbroken because I fell in love with that car. And he was like, exactly. He said, how about this? Come in and see it one more time. You don't have to commit to anything. Just see how you like it. So by the way, I live two hours away from Swindon. So this shows my dedication. I literally jumped in my Taycan and I zipped down to Swindon. I saw the car again. And when I tell you, I got an electric feeling from the bottom of my feet, all the way top to the, up my spine to my head. And it felt like, it was like electricity was in the air. And I said, I've just fallen in love with this car. That's what I said out loud. I said, Tom, I wish I never came back because now I want So I looked at him and I said, Tom, I think I want to buy it. He said, are you sure? And I said, yeah. I said, give me a few days. I'm going to let you know. Coincidentally, my friends at Porsche who are over the road from Swindon said to me, Tommy, we know you've been looking for a GT3. We have a purple 992 GT3 in stock now. You can have it. And I was like, wait, what the, what's happening? Like two cars that I really want. I got distracted. They were like, you can have the GT3. If you trade in your G-Wagon, you're also gonna take out some money for your G-Wagon. So you're gonna have your GT3 and some money left over from the G-Wagon. I love money. So I was like, this is making sense. And then I was like 90% on the GT3, which is crazy. I, I don't, I won't get the Ferrari, I'll just get the GT3. It makes more financial sense. And I'll be able to walk away with the equity that I had in the G-Wagon now as physical cash. So I was right about to buy the GT3. And what happened? A customer came and bought it right then and there whilst we were having this discussion. They brought a trailer and they took it away. And I said, if that isn't God telling me to go and get this Ferrari, I don't know what is. So I get home now, 
I'm thinking about the Ferrari and I say to my wife, I'm gonna buy this Ferrari. And she said, if you think it's the right thing to do, then do it. So I literally said to Tom, let's do it. Let's make this happen. Ferrari Financial Services, again, they sorted everything out for me. And it was a smooth process. I went to pick up the car and from the video that is on my page, you can see it was a very marvelous um, experience picking up the car. But it was just crazy because it was like God pushed me in the direction of getting this Ferrari. It just happened in such a strange way. Anyway, I picked up the car. I've been living with it since and I love it. And I think that if I didn't get this car, I would have missed out on a few opportunities that have come up since then that I can't talk about just yet. And I would have also not opened my mind to how sick Ferraris are. I mean, I've been sleeping on the Prancing Horse because I was not interested whatsoever. Pista was the last Ferrari that I thought I would be interested in, but this 812 has knocked my socks off. Um, I'll do another video later on about the buying process and what you should do when you're buying your first supercar. Uh, pretty much everything I did ignore that and do what you think's best for you. <laughs> Probably do more research because I just kind of went into it blind. I knew, I know about cars a bit, but I didn't really do much research when it came to 812 because I was so in love with the car. But um, yeah, that is the buying process of my 812 Superfast. I love this car, it's incredible. Um, Ferrari after sales have been good. They've messaged me to make sure everything's okay with the car. They send me other cars, they invite me to events. It's been an amazing experience so far. Um, my car is in blue electric code behind me, as you can see. Also, a lot of people think that when you buy a Ferrari, it has to be red for your first one. And that, again, is not true. You can buy it in any color you want. Any color that's available, you can have. Ferrari, again, are not the mafia. They will let you do what you want as long as you're buying the car. So yeah, they said, I can take it in any color I want. Um, you can have any Ferrari you want as long as it's available. Uh, so immediately, all of the myths of you can't do this, and you can't do that with Ferrari were knocked out the path. Uh, I think a lot of YouTubers have heard secondhand stories from a friend's cousin, and now they kind of like regurgitate that information. I don't think it's entirely true unless your deal is terrible. But yeah, that was my buying process. Um, I, again, it's an amazing car. I need to start driving it more. I took it 500 miles up north to a place called Grantley Hall and it was incredible throughout that whole journey. This car is a lot more comfortable than I expected it would be, especially when you press the bumpy road mode. It is just spectacular. I've got a video on my page where I go around this car and I show you, so I'm not going to do it again, but um, I just wanted to share my story and it is a story of how when you have that feeling and when something makes sense financially, emotionally and spiritually, I guess, you should just do it because if I didn't get this car, I would be upset because no other car like it has come up since. And also, it hasn't gone down in value, so that's a bonus. Anyway, peace. <laughs>